Hello, thank you for joining me. I'm just walking along the road in Chalfont St Peter. I'm about half a mile away from the village centre and today we're going to Chalfont Park. Now, most people, if you go to Chalfont Park, you wouldn't come the way I'm coming. But the reason I'm bringing you this way is because I want to show you the original entrance. So this is the old road to Buckingham that way and if you went that way you'd have ended up in Uxbridge. And just here, it's not that exciting now, but this would have been the gateway to Chalfont Park. You can just see there a gate post. So you'd have driven off up there. About 40 yards away is the um, dual carriageway of the A413. So there's not much left to this, but I wanted to start this video like we were arriving the old way through the old gate. So what I'm going to have to do now, I'm going to retrace my steps that way. I'm going to walk around and into Chalfont Park. If I wanted to, I could go that way and go for a footpath down through the woods, but I'm going to go um, back that way, and what I'll do is we shall end up on the other side of the A413 about this point, and we should continue up towards Chalfont Park. So here we are on the other side of the A413. We were literally just over there a moment ago. Um, the drive would have somehow swept across here, round the corner, and along here in this direction. So I'm not sure the exact point of where the drive would have run, um, but what we're doing is we're, we're kind of following roughly in um, the footsteps of you know how it would have been when you arrived here. So what happens now? I will continue on up here and. Um, we shall soon be near the house. We'll have a look at some of the ground of the house. Over the other side of the trees there is George Cross Golf Club. So that's been built on the wider estate. So really, all of what you see now would have been, you know, Parkland. You know when you go up a drive sometimes to some of these big stately homes and you're just sort of driving through Parkland? It would have been like that, really. Um, but like I said, I'm not sure the exact position of where the drive would have been, but... It would have been somewhere here, but as I said, it's unfortunately been all obliterated by the A413, because of course the original A413 would have been where we were at the start of the video. So I'll just show you the, um, the dual carriageway now. Again, so you can see quite a large chunk it's taken out of. It, over there, in those woods just down there, that's where one of the tributaries of the River Misborn starts. If you have a look out for my tributaries of the Misborn video, link on screen now, um, you'll see that. And in that video, we, we do come to Chalfont Park because some of the tributaries, as well as the main river, flow through Chalfont Park. And I did say that I would come back and do a video on Chalfont Park, um, the house and the estate. So now, the current driveway is just over there. I'm on this cycle path, which doesn't really go anywhere other than Chalfont Park. Um, I remember them building it. I'm not sure if the point was for it to go all the way to Denham, which would have been really useful to have been able to have cycled to Denham and to Arxbridge. I'm not sure about that, or if it was purely for people who work in um, the business park, which is also here at Chalfham Park, which we shall get onto fairly soon once we get close to the house and we look around the estate. So um, we're just continuing along here. Now I know this isn't the most exciting part of the estate, but um, it's going to get better. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to carry on walking along here. I want to get to a more in interesting part of the estate. I should show you. Well, we are now reaching the end of this cycleway. See what I mean? It kind of just ends there a bit abruptly. Not really sure why it ends here, whether it is purely for people who work here, because there isn't really anywhere you could safely cycle on. If you go along there um, to the end of this road, you end up on the A413, where it's a dual carriageway. So, you know, there's no kind of nice real way to carry on cycling. But if you want to come here for a walk, it's, it's a really nice place. You can walk around and um, see the estate. So if you look here, we've got some of the original wall, or well, I say original, the estate's been here you know, hundreds of years. It goes back to the 12th century, so obviously that's not 12th century. That's the modern business park. We'll go and have a look at that um, in a minute. So the estate goes back to the 12th and 13th century 
uh, it's gone through various um, you know owners and different people have inherited it it's a very complex history so what I'm going to focus on in today's video is the house we see today and what we see today and when it was put there so the main house is um, it well it was built in 1755 but it was extended by um, the architect John Nash who designed Brighton Pavilion so he designed really most of what you'll see on the outside today so it's that that I'm most interested in and it's that that we are coming to look at so if we get to here the view opens out we can see the house in front of us um, flowing along here is one of those tributaries of the River Misbourne um, which as I said we did a separate video on that so as we come to here got this lovely big London plain and a nice big cedar tree and here is the Chalfon Park house so we're just going to go and have a look so you can if you walk up there you can kind of go around the back and um, you can go and see the lake which if you watch my um, Misborn series we do have a look at the lake but now let's have a look at the house because it is a beautiful house So it's all offices now. I remember there used to be a big ugly extension when I was a child. It was like a 50s or 60s built extension. That was all demolished. Um, but the business part they replaced it with isn't that much more exciting. This London plane, look, it's huge. Look how big that trunk is. It's really, really a lovely tree. Let's have a look up there. So, um, yeah, let's go and have a look. There was a cricket pitch there, Tell, a few years ago, um, but that all seems to have been closed down. There's the front of the house. It was a hotel at one point, this house, and it was also used in the spy film, the 1965 spy film Thunderball. So, um, and it does, it does seem to appear in various other old films, probably because we're not too far away from various studios, such as Pinewood, and of course there was Denham Studios, so that's probably why it appears in so many films. So that you have one last look at the front, let's go around the back. So as we go round here onto the lawn, there's a lot of Canada geese enjoying the lawn. So as for the grounds of the house, um, Capability Brown came here to do a feasibility study of the estate to see if he could landscape it, but he didn't get the job. In the end, the job went to Humphrey Repton, who was kind of his rival, quite a lot of country houses, Reva, Capability Brown, or Humphrey Repton. Humphrey Repton did the Shardlow's estate, which we went to on the River Misborn series. The River Misborn flows through two Humphrey Repton estates. Just rather nice ponds here. In the back of the house. So the back of the house, it's this um, Gothic style. They call it the Strawberry Hill Gothic style which I think is a really attractive um, style. One day we should go to Strawberry Hill House in London and um, make a video there. But now let's go over to the lake. So this is all the Humphrey Repton Parkland. So I think probably where the A413 is, that probably would have had a lot more of Humphrey Repton's work. Um, the grounds would have been laid out, but unfortunately the road was put through it. But here is the River Misborn. I do remember as a child, there weren't so many bushes, so you could stand on the other side of the lake and get a really nice picture looking across at the house, um, which that view kind of isn't possible anymore. But here is the River Misborn, and it's dug out like a lake. And um, if you look that way, you get a nice view of the back of the house. So there was a big, that area there where, those, where there's a car park behind the hedge, that was a big, ugly 1960s building, which... Um, like I say, it was demolished in about 2000 and they replaced it with um, the business part you see today, which um, isn't that much more attractive. But I'm going to leave the lake now. We'll come back to the river soon. It's so clear, that water. Let's go and leave the lake. I want to go and show you some more former gardens that were once here. Well, and to a certain extent still are here, but have been altered to accommodate today's office needs. It's interesting though, when you look at the house from this angle, it kind of gives the impression that, you know, these, what are now external walls, have at some point not been external walls. There's a vegetable patch there, growing tomatoes, that's quite nice. Um, I quite like this building, now I'm not exactly sure when this one was added. You can see it's got the castellated towers. What we'll do, if we go over here, 
we'll go and walk through it. So if I'd come here 20 years ago, I'd have been in the middle, inside the middle of a 1960s laboratory style building. Um, so it's changed quite a lot, but somehow this building, I'd, I'd love to see, if anyone's got any pictures of how it all was in the 60s, I'd love to see them because this would have been somehow in the middle. Um, I've only got about one picture I've ever seen of how it was. Um, giving some clues away to how it's been here through the years. Look, you've got some critical windows here, which, um, you know, they're, they're an endangered species. So if we come through here, leaving the castellated house, gatehouse behind us. Um, I'm not so sure if that was intended to be a gatehouse. Maybe this was the entrance to the stables, because somewhere around here, there would have been stables. Now, let's go look at the old Italian gardens. I know parts of these were designed by Edwin Lutchins. I'm not sure if this building here was, but certainly when we go through here, it has all been been changed over the years. But what you see looking down there was designed by Edwin Lutchins. The building at the end was the old gardener's cottage. It's now a nursery for children. Um, I wonder how many children go to a nursery that was designed by Edwin Lutchins. But where you see this grass with the pond in the middle, it would have once stepped down. So there were sort of steps going down to a pond in the middle. So yeah, it's really um, quite an attractive garden. Um, it's kind of, it sort of works as it is today with the offices. Although really I'd rather it just was as it was, but I suppose, you know, as times move on, things change. And I suppose it just isn't possible that every country state can be a national trust place or indeed a tourist attraction, but at least we can, you know, still walk around and enjoy parts of it. One thing I'm not sure someone might be able to tell me is if this is fed by the River Misborn, because as we know, the River Misborn flows along behind the offices over there. Is this fed by the River Misborn or is it, you know, a separate water system? I'm sure also it could have more water in it. I think I have seen it filled right up. So we're now just coming up towards the gardener's cottage. So just imagine these buildings aren't here. I'm trying to imagine me you know, in the, in the 1920s, strolling through an Italianate garden. Obviously, I wouldn't have had a camera in my hand making a video, but, you know. Um, so, yeah, here we are. This is the, this is what I believe is the gardener's cottage, designed by Edwin Lutchins. And if you look that way, you get the vista of down through what was the Italianate gardens to Chalfont Park House. Let's go and find the real river Misbourne again, because I always enjoy a walk by a river. Um, so I'm just going to take you through this not so exciting area behind the office, although we do get a better view of the other side of the gardener's cottage. Um, the kitchen garden would have been somewhere over there. Um, the place we're going to now is just through here. We're going to go down this little path um, and um, we're going to go down here and that's where we should see some more of the river. Now, if you watch my tributaries of the River Misborn video, you will have seen we did come down here before, um, because one of the tributaries springs out the ground just here. It's hard to see, but on the other side of that fence. Um, so I want to finish. We've been here twice before now, where we're going to, but it's part of the Misborn I really like. Went here on the tributaries of the Misborn, and we went here on the main River Misborn series we are going to go to where the small river Misborn, which is just here in these woods, flows down a cascade into the lake. So this is, this is my favourite part of the gardens, I just always like it. It's nice and peaceful and um, there we have the cascade. So from in the woods by the cascade in Chalfont Park. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. Please do feel free to like, subscribe, comment. If you're in the area, come and have a walk around here for yourself. Thanks very much for watching. Goodbye.